Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Popsicle, a sweet new show that laps up what's new in pop culture. My name is RJ from RJ's Food Rocks, and today is a very special edition of the show. It is a pop-up edition. Pop! Pop-up edition of the show where it's just me today um, giving you a tasty new recommendation of pop culture that you can consume. Full disclosure, this means that I have consumed pop culture too fast that I couldn't find anyone to talk about it. So, uh, you know, you. I, but I'm still super excited to talk about it and hope that these pop-ups will get you excited and jazzed about something that's new that's coming out or um, something that's out there that I really want you to like look forward to and look at and, and hopefully you can come back to this video and be like, wow, RG was right. Or RG was wrong and I want to tell him off. Go ahead, let's start a conversation. In the inaugural pop-up edition of The Popsicle, today's pop-up is the debut novel from author Robbie Couch, The Sky Blues. Ta-da! So let me read you the two cold didn't eat. Sky Baker may be openly gay, but in his small insular town, making sure he's invisible has always been easier than being himself. Determined not to let anything ruin his senior year, Sky decides to make a splash at his high school's annual beach bum party by asking his crush, Ollie, to prom and he has 30 days to do it. What better way to start living loud and proud than by pulling off the gayest promposal that Rockledge, Michigan has ever seen? Then, Sky's plans gets leaked by an anonymous hacker in a deeply homophobic e-blast that quickly goes viral. He's fully prepared to skip town altogether until his classmates give him a reason to fight back by turning his 30-day promposal countdown into a school-wide hunt to expose the e-blast perpetrator. But what happens at the end of the 30 days? Will Sky get to keep his hard-won visibility, or will his small-town blues stop him from being his true self? Full disclosure, once again, I have never read a book so fast in my life. I literally read it in two hours. The time it took Adam and Ali and Ari to record a new episode of Harry Potter and the Anxious Millennials, I read this entire book, and that has never happened before. But let's talk about the suite of this uh, book. Um, what I really loved about the book is that the dialogue is so good. It is that, like, it's that, like, pre-TikTok teenager talk. <laughs> where we're not as like quippy and as fast yet, but we're getting there. Like our pop culture references um, are, are, you know, are, are, are there, but it's not quite as fast as it is now. Um, it feels very like pre-Snapchat era. I, I wrote it down as like very Evan Hansen timeline. Like it's that era of social media um, before we get into like the fast bites of, you know, TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram. Um, and what's usually hard is that like teenagers, the, the you know, like teenager dialogue is always so hard to write because it, you know, it, it's hard sometimes when you have an adult write it and it doesn't sound real. It sounds super fake. But um, the author did a really great job with this. The, the dialogue was really, you know, like comfortable and still almost like how I, I talk with my friends from high school now. Like it just felt really grounded and 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 fast. And I really, really love that. And so I really do want to point that out. That the dialogue was, was something that um, really stood out to me. I think the main theme of the, of the book, which was kind of touched on a little bit by the TCDE, is that this book really like champions the idea of found family to like the best way that I have seen it. More than RuPaul saying found family over and over again on Drag Race, but like it's really like at its finest in this book and in the story, especially um, in a circumstance where your given family or the family that you were you're born into is not there with you, whether um, special circumstances happen, like accidents happen, or they have just changed through time. Um, so I really do want to point that out. That's really one of the beautiful things that the book does is make a claim for found families. And I think the book really claims to of like found family can come from wherever. It's not just, you know, it could be literally who the people that you're living with, but also um, in his mentors in school, yearbook, his yearbook teacher, Winter, is a very uh, strong influence on Sky. And even his friends, both like queer and non-queer. And that was also a really interesting point that Sky felt the need to almost like downplay his own quote unquote gayness or his own queerness because he has a, a straight male friend who is starting to like date and starting to, you know, kind of like come into his own like maleness uh, and his own manhood. And I think um, in the book, Sky explains kind of like his own uncomfort um, just because he isn't um, 
displaying his own masculinity the same way that straight men do. So um, that was also a really kind of interesting arc to go through to see like a person like have to make those small um fights you know like and he's really picking his own battles of like okay this is is this a battle that i'm actually putting energy and effort in like downplaying my own self to my best friend who just happens to be straight um so that was really interesting um another idea that really struck out to me from the book is this idea of toughness and bravery um i think like like I said, like the timeliness of the book of like it being, it feels like my generation, like millennials, it, this is kind of like how we wanted our teenage years to be. Like we wanted to be brave and tough because we were still kind of like in the era of, you know, like early 2000s up to 2010, like school during that time was a little different because people weren't as open. We just, it just wasn't as, you know, open and free as it is now for, for kids. And I think it's some, it really explores that idea of like our generation does look back on when we were growing up and when we were teenagers and us wishing and wanting to have been more tougher, have been tougher, braver, you know, stronger and st stood up for ourselves more, which I think is like, in full display in the book that is what sky is fighting for and um it really comes through i mean it is still a you know kind of a young adult rom com -y almost uh book so you do have to suspend your disbelief a little bit about some things that happen but at the end of the day everyone does support him and for the people that don't support him they just kind of like disappear from the, his life and that's fine you don't have to spend energy to keep people that um won't let you be your genuine self, you know? So I thought that was very nice. So let's talk about a couple things that were sticky about the book um, that I promise will not deter you from wanting to read this book still though. Um, uh, I think it's just interesting that like small town homophobia and xenophobia is still something that we have to like write about. I know that's the reality for a lot of people. Um, it, it just, it just kind of sucks that it is such a thorn still in our stories. Um, but definitely from this book versus other books that talk about it that may hit harder on it, this doesn't, this definitely doesn't hit it as hard. Um, there is still, like I said, there is like suspension of disbelief because it is still, you know, like it's a teen novel. It's still kind of like rom com -y. Um, because I think like if you actually look at what could happen in a small town in Michigan, I think there were things that probably could have gone a lot worse for the queer and the POC characters of the book. So <laughs> I was like, okay, I have to kind of remi remind myself that that's, that's the case. But I do feel like there is that, there is that lingering, uh, like the author really uses that idea of like, there are always something lingering that's like something doesn't quite add up, but I don't have time to like think about that right now. I have to just put it away and like, it's as if the author is like, here, I'm giving you something real quick, but I know that we have to keep moving along with the story. So that'll, that'll clean up later. Don't worry. But I just want you to know, <laughs> um, which I was just like reading. I mean, I guess reading in one sitting too has definitely been like, oh yeah, that's, that's weird. But you keep going because I'm still following like a, a path. Um, constantly things are changing and are happening. And we do our best to just juggle everything, you know, like Sky, we're seeing Sky go through this whole ordeal with prom and then his whole ordeal with like safety <laughs> because there was someone out to hurt him, you know, um, with the with the e-blast, which I've never said the word e-blast before. And so it was very shocking to read the words e-blast on a book, but it did bring me back to like, oh, yep, yearbook. I was famously on yearbook. But yeah, it, it went back to like, yep, sending emails, uh, yeah, mailing groups, you know, all that good stuff growing up in the early 2000s. Um, and then also having to juggle through, like, finding out more secrets about his own family and, like, what happened to his dad and his dad's, his parents' life before he was even um, born. So fully kind of took us that, like, yes, the author is trying to kind of, like, drop me hints of other stories that will will kind of, like, clear through in the path, but... I just kind of like felt for Sky of being like, there's so much going on and I'm so sorry that you have to go through all these things. But I thought of it as like, yes, it is very true to life. There are multiple things that are always happening in our world, in our lives, but we kind of have to just like take something in and keep going and keep moving on. So I did appreciate that. So to wrap up, 
The Sky Blues by Robbie Couch. Um, it's a very easy cruise. I wrote it down as an easy cruise down Lake Michigan in spring of Sky's story as he finds himself, not in like your traditional kind of coming out narrative of like, I'm figuring myself out so that I can be brave and come out. That's already done. <laughs> that lead up is already done. But it really is more about like how to become like a stronger, braver and tougher version of yourself um, that can stand on your own and acknowledge and see the support by the people around you that love you for who you are. So it was kind of like that really nice internal um, journey to see Sky become a, a, a better version of himself so he can like graduate high school and become a, a real adult after school. So that was very nice to see. And I definitely recommend it. The Sky Blues by Robbie Couch. Thank you so much for watching another episode of The Popsicle. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and comment below and let me know if you do end up reading The Sky Blues. Um, let me know what you think. <laughs> let me know what you think of these pop-ups too. I want them to be just like super quick, like, hey, this is something that's really cool right now. Go watch it, go see it, go read it, go live it, go breathe it and let me know what you think. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you comment below and let me know what you think. If you're listening to the podcast on all of your podcast apps, make sure you leave us a rating or review. Tell me what you think of the show and what you'd like to hear more in the future. So every five episodes, I know I broke the rule because I said every five episodes is a book and literally we just read a book last week, but um, traditionally on the, the episode cycle, we read a book for our book club with Allie my friend Allie from the Harry Potter and the Anxious Millennials podcast. So make sure you grab a copy and read our next book, um, What's Mine and Yours by Naima Coster. So you can join in on our conversation. You can find me at RJ. Uh, you can find me, RJ, at RJ's Food Rocks on all of your social media. And my YouTube channel, RJ's Food Rocks, premieres a new video every week. The Popsicle is a proud member of the Ampliverse, and you can find all of our shows on theampliverse.com. Thank you again so much for listening. This has been The Popsicle. Bye. Discovering voices in the world. The Ampliverse.